ट्रांजेक्शन एट वन प्लेस रिलेटिंग टू अर्टिकुलर हेड और पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन सो वन पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन इज रिकॉर्डेड एट एट दर्टिकुलर प्लेस दैट इज कॉल्ड दी अकाउंट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव परचेज मशीनरी एंड वी हैव सोल्ड मशीनरी or during the year as well so all those transaction which are in relation to the buying and selling of machinery will be recorded at only one place which is called machinery account all right why why it is recorded at one place so that it can be easier for us to track the transaction relating to machine if you want to know if we want to know that uh what is the transaction that have taken place or how many transaction or transaction of what value have to taken place during the period of one year in relation to plant and machinery then it will be easier for us to track the transaction through that particular account just by going into that particular account we will be able to find out the uh, amount of transaction and uh, the uh, whatever the buying and selling have taken place during the period of one year so the uh, account is what account is a summarized record of all the transaction in relation to a particular kind of asset expense revenue or anything all right at a, at a particular place now we can we we have see there are two approaches on the basis of which account can be classified we have two approaches to classify the accounts uh, one is called the modern accounting approach and then we have the traditional accounting approach so based on the modern and traditional accounting approach we can classify the accounts into various categories all right so first of all talking about the <clears throat> let's talk about the modern accounting approach so under modern accounting approach we have categorized all the accounts into five categories there are five types of account as per the modern accounting approach all right and that includes the asset account liabilities expenses revenue and capital so if we talk about the modern accounting approach we have classified the account into five parts right the asset liability expense revenue capital account that means if we want to prepare the account it could be either the asset account expense account liability revenue or capital account so all the transaction can be broadly classified into five categories or five types of account now then there is one more approach by which we can classify the accounts which is called the traditional accounting approach all right so under as per the traditional accounting approach we have two categories personal and impersonal account all right personal and impersonal account now if we further classify it in detail so personal account contains three types of account like as i said traditional accounting approach have two categories personal account and personal account under the personal account we have three accounts natural personal account artificial personal account and representative personal account whereas on on the other hand in case of the impersonal account we have two types of account real and nominal account so thing is that as uh, if we talk about the modern accounting approach you can see we have five five types of account as per the modern accounting approach and if we have to broadly classify the account on the basis of traditional accounting approach we have basically three types of account one is the see one is the personal account and the other two are real account and nominal account and you have to keep that in mind that under the personal account we have three more accounts namely net natural artificial and representative personal account all right so for the time being just keep that in mind just just uh, you don't have to remember the various uh, sub divisions of the personal account just keep that in mind we have two we have three types of account under the tra traditional approach we have five types of account as per the modern accounting approach so talking about the modern accounting approach we have five which are asset liability expense revenue and capital on the other hand under the impersonal account sorry uh, under the traditional accounting approach we have personal real and nominal account 
So what are these accounts? What are the various transactions which are recorded in these different types of account? We'll talk about that later one by one. But first of all, we'll start with the uh, modern accounting approach. We will try to classify these items into different different categories depending upon their nature. You have to tell me these transactions should be recorded in which category of the account. So uh, here I have uh, around uh, 15 transactions, 15 items. And considering these items, you have to tell me in which account they will be recorded in or, or they, they, these items deals with which kind of account. And you have to classify these items on the basis of the modern accounting approach. That means either you have to basically, like it, it says in the question itself, classify them under the asset liability expense revenue account. All right. So let's start. Let's first of all start with the first item, which is land. So could any one of you please tell me land will fall under which category of account as per the modern accounting approach? It is. It will fall under the asset liability expense or revenue. It is very easy. I'm sure. Everyone is yeah, perfect. Very good. That is obviously it is an asset. So land will fall under the category of the asset. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, so land is asset. Asset account. Land we have the building. Building also falls under the category of the asset. Salary. Tell me anyone. Salary will fall in which category? Expense. Yes, it is an expense. Perfect. Then debtors. Expense. Debtors. Debtors. Debtors are also expense. Sorry, sir. No. Asset. Yes, correct. That is an asset. Bad debt. Like Everyone understand the meaning of the bad debt. Bad debt refers to the amount of debt which is not which company won't be able to recover. So bad debt is a kind of loss. A loss can be treated as an expense for the company. So obviously bad debt is an expense account. Depreciation. Expense. Yes, expense. Very good. Fright. Expense. Yeah, right. Goodwill. Yeah, goodwill is an asset. And which kind of asset it is? I mean, it is the tangible or the intangible asset? Intangible. Intangible, intangible asset, right. Intangible asset that falls under the non-current asset. Okay. Asset. Investments. Asset. <coughs> yes, it is also an asset. Interest received. Revenue. Revenue. Good. Overdraft. Liability. Very good. Creditors. Liability. Capital. capital. Yes, capital have a separate account. Capital itself, capital account. Capital is recorded in the capital account only. Motor vehicle. Asset. Asset. Yes. Wages. Expense. Expense. Good. Repairs. Expense. Expense. Very good. All right. So <clears throat> this was our first question. So this is how we usually pre present this in the exam. We uh, basically make different column for different types of account and whichever item falls under whichever category of the account, we write that item under that particular head or category. 
moving to the next question again this is a this is a similar kind of question in this question also we have to classify these item depending upon their nature into various category of the account based on the modern accounting approach asset liability capital revenue expense which i'm sure everyone will be able to do so i i don't think i should be doing this so i'm skipping this question right everyone because i i'm i'm feeling that everyone yes, is comfortable with this already so <laughs> moving to the to the next question again again these these there are items given in the question and depending upon the item you have to classify them into various accounts based on the modern accounting approach which again i'm I, i'm thinking that you will be able to do so i'm skipping that as well so no yeah sorry so one question mm -hmm. so bills receivable will come under which category bills receivable is an asset bills payable is a liability okay. now okay, under asset as well bills receivable is a current asset and bills payable is a current liability all right yes sir okay now proceeding further in the chapter we must know the format of the account which i'm sure that everyone already know but anyways because this is the part of the chapter so we have to cover it so this is how the this is how we prepare the account uh, we have basically four columns in usually we have four columns in account apart from this you can make the column for the date and then there could be one more extra column for the ledger folio as well but most of the time when we solve question we prepare these four columns so at least there should be four columns while preparing an account and these four columns can be broadly classified into two two parts two sides in fact uh, there is this left side and the right side of the account left side of the account is called the debit side this is called the debit side and debit side is indicated by the uh, uh, by by basically this is a sign of debit dr is the sign that we use for the debit side and right side of the accounting table or the format of the account is called the credit side and uh, credit side basically indicated by cr which means cr basically means credit cr means the right side of the of any account and dr means the left side of any account <laughs> okay <clears throat> now uh now there are there are rules regarding the debit and credit now we'll we'll focus upon those rules now see rules of debit and credit depends upon the accounting approach that we follow so if we are following the modern accounting approach then we have separate rules using which we will be preparing different types of account and the rule to some extent it changes not completely but the statement changes uh, if we if we talk about the uh, traditional accounting approach so there is not uh, much difference in both the approaches as far as the accounting treatment is concerned but uh, there are the, the rules are little bit different all right so we are first of all starting with the modern accounting approach so we'll first of all learn about the rule relating to modern accounting approach only so rules of debit and credit as per the modern accounting approach says so first rule is regarding the asset all right so rule of rule in respect of asset says asset means basically whenever we are preparing the asset account so you have to keep these things in mind like if there is increase in the value of the asset then such amount or such increase need to be recorded on the debit side of the account like we just we just understood this format of the account right so if like for example if i'm talking about the particular uh, for example just a second so let's suppose this is a, a particular kind of asset account like this is a machinery account for example so if it is the machinery account the rule says in respect of machinery account that 
whenever there is increase in asset that means whenever there is increase in machinery increase in machinery means what it means whenever we buy machine so that need to be recorded on the debit side of the machinery account like for example like for example if we are we have bought machinery costing 5 lakh so that 5 lakh need to be recorded on the debit side of the machinery account to you this will be recorded to bank this indicate we have purchased the machinery by 5 lakh and similarly if there is reduction in the value of the asset reduction will arise only when we sell the particular kind of asset like if we sell a machinery having a value of uh, like for example 2 lakh then such need to be recorded on the credit side of the of the account so this will be recorded as by bank all right so th the rule regarding the asset is very clear it says whenever asset increases we should debit the asset account whenever asset decreases we should credit the asset account now in respect of liability the rule is completely opposite it says when liability increases we should credit the liability and whenever liability decreases then in that case we should debit the liability account like in the previous case like if suppose this is <clears throat> this is not a machinery account let's take an example and assume that this is a liability account like for example this is creditors all right this is creditors account creditors are what creditors are liability so if there is increase in the creditor like for example if we have bought goods of rupees 5 lakh from one of the supplier on credit if we buy goods from the supplier on credit so in that situation our liability will increase so in that case we will be recording that amount like for example if we have bought goods costing 5 lakh and it is causing increase in the value of the liability that need to be recorded on the credit side of the credit side of the liability account <laughs> all right and similarly if we have paid or if there is decrease in the value of the creditor in that case only it it should be recorded in, on the debit side of the liability account like like if we have paid 2 lakh to our to one of our supplier from whom we have earlier bought goods on credit we have paid him 2 lakhs out of the total value of 5 lakh we paid him 2 lakhs so payment of 2 lakh will cause reduction in the value of the overall liability and therefore it should be recorded on the debit side of the account all right so this is what the rule says as per in respect of the liability account i hope everything is clear all of you <clears throat> yes sir now moving to the next part uh these are the asset and liability in res rules regarding the asset and liability we have the other type of account as well which is revenue and expense now talking about the revenue rule regarding revenue is exactly same exactly like the liability account as i just told you that in respect of the liability rule says whenever liability increases we had we have to credit liability right similarly if revenue is increasing we have to credit the revenue account and if revenue decreases we have to debit the revenue account if you will pay attention you will find that the rule regarding the revenue and the liability is same see increase in liability need to be credited decrease in liability need to be debited same goes with the revenue increase in revenue credit decrease in revenue debit so if if like for example if this is a revenue account for example in respect of revenue uh, let's suppose this is this is an account for commission commission account all right so if there is increase in the value of commission if we have earned income by way of commission uh let's suppose we have earned 50000 by way of commission so the, that 50000 need to be credited and similarly if we have paid uh or if, if there is reduction in the value of the commission then it should be debited so reduction in the income or revenue will be debited reduction in the revenue will be debited and increase in the revenue will be 
credited. Okay. Now, so the rule regarding the revenue is exactly similar to the liability. And if you if you pay close attention and try to understand, then you will find that the rule regarding the expense is exactly similar to the asset account. See, we just learned that whenever there is increase in asset, we need to debit it. Similarly, whenever there is increase in expense, we will have to debit it. And there is decrease in expense, it should be credited. Just like decrease in asset is debited, sorry, decrease in asset is credited. Similarly, decrease in expense will also be credited. Increase in expense will be debited just like the increase in asset used to be debited. Got it, everyone? Is this clear? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So till this point, we learned that the rule regarding, if you if you remember the rule regarding the regarding the asset and liability, that is that is enough. Rule regarding the asset and expense is same. Rule regarding the liability and revenue is same. And rule regarding the liability, revenue, and capital as well is also same. Rule in respect of capital is same as the liability account. See, if there is increase in capital, we should credit it. Don't you think that it is exactly same as the liability account or the revenue account? So rule regarding the liability and revenue and capital are all same. Decrease in capital, we should debit it. Increase in capital, we should credit it. Tell me if this is clear, yes or no, liability is equal to expense equals to, I'm, I'm talking about the rules here, okay. Rule of liability account, expense account, and the capital account all are same. All right, everyone, is this clear, yes or no? All right, so if you're learning this for the first time, it can, it, it, it may be, you may find it a little confusing, but believe me, this is easy. Uh, in our syllabus, we have prepared so many accounts. Uh, so if you have made the accounts, you already have the cl clarity about these things. But because this is the part of our part of this chapter, so I need to explain it. Now, I'm sure everybody is clear about this. So let's move to the next variety of question. This is the information on the basis of which you just need to identify on which side of the account these should be recorded. Question says, on which side will be the increase in the asset, in increase in the following account will be recorded. Now question makes it specifically clear that these items are increasing. All right, and you just have to determine on which side of the account these items need to be recorded. You don't have to determine the account wherein it should be recorded. You just have to tell me the site. So first item is furniture. Question is if furniture increases, tell me on which side of the account we should record Debit it. Side. Yes, because uh, furniture is an asset and if asset increases, we should debit it. Therefore, it should be debited. Capital, there is increase in the capital. And we learned that whenever there is increase in capital, we should credit it. Salary. Salary is an expense. It is increasing, so we should credit it. Purchase. Again, it is an expense. Right? It is an expense. We should credit it. Yes or no? Sir, sir, we should debit it. We should? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There is an increase. So in respect of the capital, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, debit, debit, and capital should be credited, yeah. Right? Now sales, talking about the sales, sales is what sales is a revenue. And revenue increases, then we should credit, credit it, credit the revenue account, okay. Interest paid, it is an expense. Expense is increasing, so we should debit the expense. Debit. Sohan, who is a creditor, 
if liability towards sohan is increasing it is obviously it is a, a liability Credit. yes liability is increasing no so we should credit good ram is an asset he is a debtor so asset is increasing debit debit sorry <coughs> right, everyone okay so that means we can move to the next slide so this is how we present the answer of this kind of question anyways moving to the next question again similar kind of question is asked wherein it says that these there is a reduction in these in respect of these things these items and you have you just have to identify on which side of the account it should be recorded so cash cash is again let me let me just quickly solve it cash is asset there is a reduction in asset we should credit it bank overdraft it is a liability there is reduction in the liability so we should be debiting it outstanding salary it is a liability there is reduction in the liability so we should again debit it outstanding rent is also a liability we should be debiting the out, uh, the outstanding rent account and prepaid insurance prepaid insurance is asset if there is decrease in asset we will be crediting capital by rohan there is reduction in the capital rule regarding the capital is similar to the liability so if capital is decreasing we should be debiting it understood all of you <coughs> is okay all right now now this was all about the modern accounting approach wherein we learned about the different category of the account as per the modern accounting approach and we also learned the rules various rules regarding the treatment of transaction in respect of the different types of account all right so we we also learned the rules and we also learned the different types of account that falls under the category of the modern accounting approach now let's talk about the traditional accounting approach wherein i have already told you that uh, as per the traditional accounting approach we have two categories of account personal and personal under the impersonal account uh, we have the norm uh, yeah the nominal and the real account all right so talking about what is a nominal account let me tell you nominal account are all those account which are related to loss expense income or gain so all those account which are related to loss expense income or gain are known as the nominal account for example like rent rent like usually rent is an expense most of the time in most of the question rent is an expense so rent is an expense it, it will be treated as a nominal account commission received account is a commission is an income so therefore account related to the commission will be treated as the nominal account as well salary wages conveyance all of these are the expenses therefore account in relation to these type of items will be considered as the nominal account all right i'm i'm sure everybody understand that yes or no yes, understood sir. okay now apart from this we have the next account under the impersonal account which is the real account <laughs> all right now real account is what it is an account which deals with all kind of assets all accounts relating to assets are called the real account so we already know the different types of asset na so cash investment machinery building or any other kind of asset whether it is the current asset or the non current asset tangible intangible every kind of asset will fall under the category of the real account but there are certain exception to this like bank bills receivable debtors prepaid expenses and accrued income even though these five items are falls under the category of the asset listen to me very carefully even though these five items falls under the category of the asset but still account in relating in relation to these items is not considered as the real account please keep that in mind these five types of account or, or i uh, accounts in relation to these items won't be considered as the real account 
अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज फाइव अकाउंट और एक्सेप्ट दीज फाइव आइटम्स ऑल अदर एसेट रिलेटेड अकाउंट विल फॉल अंडर दैटेगरी ऑफ द रियल अकाउंट बट बैंक बिल्स रिसीवेबल डेटर्स प्रीपेड एक्सपेंस अक्रूड इनकम वॉन्ट बी कंसिडर्ड एज दी रियल अकाउंट सो वाई बिकॉज दीज विल बी ट्रीटेड अंडर दी पर्सनल अकाउंट सो देर फोर वी आर स्कीपिंग एंड वी आर नॉट इंक्लूडिंग दीज टाइप ऑफ अकाउंट अंडर दी रियल अकाउंट वी विल बी काउंटिंग दैम अंडर दी पर्सनल अकाउंट सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दी पर्सनल अकाउंट यूजली पर्सनल अकाउंट आर are those kind of account which basically related to liability so all liability related account like creditors bills payable outstanding expense long term short term loans all these kind of account which is a liability account will be treated as the personal account now as i said usually personal account deals with de- deals with what deals with the liability accounts but there are five asset as well which falls under the category of the personal account usually personal account deals with the liability account but these are the accounts like bank bills receivable debt prepaid expenses accrued income and capital yeah capital as well capital also falls under the category of the personal account all right everyone you will be will you be able to remember that okay so let me give you a quick recap under the traditional approach of accounting we have classified the accounts into three category personal nominal and real nominal account are those account which deals with the expenses income gains or losses all right whereas real account are account of the assets all asset related items are comes under the real account except the five account bank br debtor prepaid expenses and accrued income and personal account are the liability related accounts all liabilities liability related account comes under the personal account including few asset account as well like bank bills receivable debtor prepaid expense accrued income and the capital account as well okay now let's move forward in this chapter and let's also now talk about the there is one more thing uh th- these are the items and on the basis of the traditional accounting approach you need to identify and classify these item into different category of the account as per the traditional accounting approach so like furniture as we learned furniture is an asset right and all asset related account comes under which category tell me quickly All asset related account comes under which category? Sir, real account. Yes, real. Now tell me, capital account will fall under? Personal account. Personal account. Good. Salary. Nominal account. Yes, because it is an expense. Purchase. It is also an expense. So. nominal account sales is a revenue tell me nominal account again interest paid nominal account yes it is an expense so nominal again sohan who is a creditor it is a liability tell me personal account personal account very good and debtor real account no Debtor, even though it is an asset, yes, but we have excluded certain items under the category of the asset from the category of the asset. So that those assets which do not fall under the category of the real account will be part of the personal account. All right, understood, everyone. <clears throat> All right. So now let's move to the next question. Again. these are the various items you need to identify them on the basis of the traditional traditional accounting approach carriage machinery sales cash ram sales return purchases bed debt discount all of these items need to be classified into different category of account based on the traditional accounting approach which i'm sure everyone will be able to solve on uh, uh, solve solve so i'm i'm skipping this question right if anybody want me to explain it 
kindly tell me so that we can discuss it otherwise i'm moving to the next slide tell me anyone want me to discuss that or do you think you will be able to do this tell me what do you think will you be able to you can do it okay that's good all right so now next slide now there are rules regarding the traditional accounting approach as well so as i said rules of debit and credit is similar but the but the treatment is little different even though ultimately we will be doing the same thing but because there are three accounts only uh, as compared to the modern accounting approach so things here seems little different so talking about the nominal account first of all as we know nominal account deals with the expense losses income and those kind of thing so rule there is a rule of uh, a rule regarding the nominal account which says we if we are dealing with the nominal account we should debit all expenses losses and credit all incomes and gain that means if we are dealing with the expense and loss kind of account under the nominal account we have four categories na expense losses income and gain so if we are talking about the expenses or losses all right so whenever there is increase in expense just a second yeah it says expenses or losses need to be debited All right, and similarly, if there is income and gains, it should be credited. We can simply say that if there is increase in expense, that should be debited. If there is decrease in expense or there is a gain, we should credit it. Decrease in expense simply means it is a gain. All right. So expense and losses need to be debited. Incomes and gains should be credited. As per the nominal account, uh, sorry, as per yeah, in respect of the nominal account. so for example if you are preparing uh, let's say if you are preparing our rent account rent account is what rent account is a it is an expense account right so if if we have paid rent all right so because there is increase in the value of the rent there is increase in the value of the expense so so we should be we should debit it right and similarly if we have received commission so commission is an income we should be crediting it so rule is very simple in respect of nominal account you have to remember the statement this statement is very very important sometimes this is also called the golden rules of the accounting debit all expenses credit all gains debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains so this is the first rule in relation to the nominal account now next there is one more rule re regarding the real account that is in respect of the asset account rule says debit what comes in credit what goes out that means if there is increase in asset that is debit what comes in and if there is decrease in asset that will be called credit what goes out that means if asset is coming into the business we should debit the asset account but if we are if there is reduction in the value of the asset if you are selling asset that means asset is going out so that by the amount by which asset is reducing it should be credited so increase in asset should be debited decrease in asset should be credited i think this rule is exactly similar to the modern accounting approach that is what we have learned under the modern accounting approach as well na that in, in whenever asset increases we should debit it and whenever asset decreases we should be crediting it all right so you have to remember this statement debit what comes in credit what goes out this statement is in relation to the real account and the first statement that we learned that debit all expenses and losses credit all gains and income is relation in relation to the nominal account further we have the one last type of account under the traditional accounting approach which says which is about the personal account and the rule regarding that it says debit the receiver and credit the giver debit the receiver and credit the giver that means if somebody is giving 
us uh like if we uh, if we have taken certain amount of loan from some third party uh that that simply means there is increase in the liability then the liability account should be credited and if there is decrease in the liability that means uh if if we if we have paid the liability in that case we should be debiting the liability account so rule in relation to the personal account is also given in a single statement which says debit the receiver credit the giver all right so debit all expense oh sorry the uh, increase the liability increase in liability need to be credited decrease in liability need to be debit all right so i hope these three statements are clear let me repeat first rule regarding the nominal account says debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains whereas rule regarding the real account says debit what comes in credit what goes out and last account which is personal account in relation to this the rule says debit the receiver and credit the giver all right i'm sure everybody is able to understand this got it everyone anybody having any doubt all right now there is a question let me read this for you it says on which side will be the decrease in the following account be recorded also identify the type of account according to the modern and traditional approach of accounting so firstly you have to tell me if that these item is decreasing there is decrease in cash bank overdraft outstanding rent prepaid insurance and capital of the proprietor in that case on which side of the account these items should be recorded number 1 number 2 we have to identify these item and classify them into various into different category of account depending upon their uh, depending upon the modern accounting and traditional accounting approach so first of all any one of you please tell me if there is decrease in the value of the cash on which side of the account we should record it credit side why because it is an asset so as per the modern accounting approach it is asset account right and as per the traditional accounting approach this this it falls under which category real account good real account perfect all right now bank overdraft bank overdraft is decreasing so that means our tell me bank overdraft falls under which category of account as per the modern accounting approach liability yes it is a liability account and when there is a decrease in the liability what do we do we debited we debited correct so debited and as per the traditional accounting approach liability comes under which type of account personal account personal account good job Similarly, outstanding rent is a liability again, and because it is decreasing, we will be debiting it, and every other thing will remain same. Prepaid insurance is asset, and because it is decreasing, we will be crediting it, and this falls under the category of the asset account, and this falls under the category of the real account, as per the. No, tell me, prepaid insurance falls under which category? Yes, personal. It is not real account. It is personal. Personal account. One last item. Capital. Mohan, proprietor of the business. There is decrease in the value of the capital, basically. So because ca capital is a falls under the category of the capital itself. So whenever capital decreases, we will be debiting it, as discussed. And as per the modern accounting approach. it falls under the capital account itself on the other hand as per the modern uh, traditional accounting approach this comes under which, which account personal account good well done. all right so this is done now we have the next question 
uh, wherein we need to we need to prepare the account for these kind of uh, information given in the question, which I'm sure everyone will be able to do on your own. I'm I'm not uh, going to prepare the these accounts for you for teacher account and in the next question see we have see this is how we will be preparing it. Uh, guys, just tell me if you want me to prepare the these account for you. Because um, I believe that these this is easy. If uh, you try to do these question on your own, I think you will be able to do that. So I won't be discussing it with you. I'll be sharing the PowerPoint of of this chapter with you, and I I, I want you to do this section, the formation of the the account on your own.